In terms of the Constitution, accused persons are entitled to a speedy trial. This section speaks about unreasonable delays, and this can apply to the state, the defense, even to witnesses. Now, here we have a, an expert ballistic expert, witness expert ballistic expert, who gives evidence in August, and this is forensic evidence. And then it takes eight months to cross-examine him, but I don't even know it's going to happen this year. It's unfair on that witness because he's seized with other matters. But the unfairness is predicated on the fact that uh, in the other, in the, <coughs> in the pursuit of the other evidence in this trial, the cross-examination also impinges upon the evidence of this witness who has given evidence for at, in August, and he's not being cross-examined on that. So that percolates to the unfairness of the process because you can't say, for instance, ballistic expert Mugumezulu put it to Mangani this and that, and Mangani said this, and this answer is taken up by Ramosipidi, for instance. That is a contradiction. You can see, you don't have to be a lawyer. Eight months, no cross-examination. And then in the meantime, we are, conceding, we are proceeding with the other evidence, okay? So this impinges on the, free, the, the freedom of it, I mean the constitutional right of a client like the accused here to have a speedy trial. And if there is a bottleneck, which is precipitated by either the defense itself or the legal aid board in not assisting in the payment of the costs of the ballistic report which the defense say it's important for the proper defense of the accused, then this court is obliged to investigate. It doesn't have to be a formal investigation if you read that. Now, if the legal aid board say we must talk about this in chambers, which is against the law, I, my recitation is I won't do anything which is against the law. So Mr. Mujuta, when he comes, if the blockage or the delay is, in, is predicated don't want to say the negligence, on the administrative capacity of his department. He must say it in open court, section 342A. It also involves the public interest and the interest of justice. Okay. So we're going to interpret them for it. So I absolutely love the side of Judge Rata, okay? Because why? Because he's demonstrating absolute br brilliance. He's demonstra demonstrating, where are my words? He's dream. Yeah! Let me try this one more time. He's demonstrating fairness. And I think I'm getting tongue-tied just because, you know, I have a compliment for Judge Ryder. But, okay, let me be serious. Okay, so I absolutely love this side of him because he's showing fairness. And I'm putting this in air quotes. He's not showing that he's taking any sides. He's just demonstrating the law, his knowledge of the law, and what is fair for the accused. I mean, this is what we sign up for when we want to watch the case. We're not trying to fault him for anything. We're not trying to fault the state. We're not trying to take the side of the defense or say that the five accused are not who should be there. But that's a story for another day. But just based on this demonstration, I say it was just it was just perfect. You're absolutely right. What is going on with the defense? Call them to order. Put them in check. Check out legal aid. Summon legal aid. If it's legal aid the problem, well, let's talk about legal aid being the problem. You know, I think he's doing the right thing by making by going through all the loopholes, I would say, to figure out what is going on because the defense ain't defensing right now. They are not bringing this forward. It is taking too long. How can we not have heard the cross-examination of the ballistic expert? with over eight months to go. It's, it, it's ridiculous. And if I was one of the accused sitting in jail, because in prison rather, because they haven't been granted bail, especially Ubongani and Tanzi, the others, you know, they have their own extracurricular activities that they're guilty of or have been found guilty of. This is just an additional trip to court for them. But in their interest of justice, in, in innocent until proven guilty, I think Judge Ratta made the right move here and that he's doing the right thing, getting to the bottom of it. But let's keep watching and wait to hear Miss legal, legal Aid expert or head of legal aid come to the forefront, tell us what's really going on, and you won't believe what's going on. Uh, Ms. Flavio Isola from Legal Aid South Africa is here. Okay, Mrs. This is Flavio Isola. Flavio Isola. 
We are from the Legal Aid Board. I am. Which position do you? I'm the head of office. The? Head of office. Head of office. For the Pretoria Local. Okay. Yeah, I received your message that you requested that we should meet in chambers. And I told Mr. Baloy that I am not able to because I want to commence a preliminary inquiry in terms of Section 342A of the Criminal Procedure Act. When there is an, a, a, a susceptible delay in the proceedings, what predicates that delay? I just want to find out. And it's an informal thing. You don't even have to swear to tell the truth. It's just if you read Section 342A, they say it's an informal inquiry. Just to find out what happens. I'll tell you. There's a witness called uh, Mangani. What's his first name, the gentleman? It's Colonel Mangena. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Colonel Mangena. He's a ballistic expert. He gave evidence in this trial in August last year. When the cross-examination had to commence, the defense requested that it must be adjourned until they have consulted their own expert. And thereafter, obviously, that expert will also prepare a report, whatever. And then they will be able to take the matter up by cross-examining this gentleman who gave evidence for the state. Now it's eight months. That has not happened. By any standards, when you read Section 342A, if there is a delay which prejudices the state, the defense, even the witnesses, even the public in the interest of justice, the state's incumbent upon the presiding judge to investigate the exigencies which are currently making it difficult for this case to proceed. Uh, I'm told by Advocate Mnisi that uh, initially the, the intention was that the accused, that is the defense, had instructed the defense that they, the accused, will make attempts to fund the costs of hiring an expert, a ballistic expert. This, I'm told, ultimately hasn't happened. But subsequently, I'm told, an amount was paid by some of the, by your client, is that not it? Mr. Nisi? By the family members, jointly. Yeah, yeah, fine, by the family members jointly. But that, that amount is still deficient. It doesn't make up the exact amount which is this demanded by your expert. Am I correct, sir? Now, I thought, because the accused have enlisted the services of the legal aid, ordinarily you would infer that they don't have the money to <coughs> pay for a ballistic expert. And they subsequently advised me that they applied to the legal aid to breach the deficiency which is short in terms of the payment or the cost which is demanded by the ballistic expert. Now, all I want to know is, is that correct, that an application has been made to the Legal Aid Board to fund the ballistic expert report and the cost of the ballistic expert giving evidence in this court? That is correct, my lord. They did apply. When did they apply, ma'am? On the 5th of April. This year? This year, yeah. That's the problem. Two but, weeks ago. Yeah, you see, that's the problem because, as I say, in August, this is what they told me they're going to do. Now, you say they applied on the 5th of April. That's correct. So what is happening now? Um, uh, we received the email and we immediately responded yeah. because in terms of the um, procedures of uh, policies and procedures of legal aid, yeah. and uh, when a duty care practitioner applies for an uh, expert, mm. they must get permission to do so. Yes. And um, obviously they must set out the grounds why they require an expert. Mm. And also they need to submit a costing mm. of such an expert. Yes. Um, the reason why we require costing, because in terms of our approval framework, different levels of approval must obviously is made. Okay. So if it's, for example, under 50,000, I can approve it mm. at, at, the, at the local office. If it's between 50 and 350,000, it must go to provincial office. Mm -hmm. And if it's above 350, it goes to the CCMC, which is the Constitutional Case Management Committee. Mm. Um, so it really just, and that's why we need a, a value of, of um, the cost it will, it, that was the, sorry, just to chat it, was the value not finished? Not yet. Not yet? No. So it's just an application to say, can you please give us some subsidy no. to defray the costs of the legal ballistic expert? Mm. There's no, <coughs> there is no indication that this gentleman's costs are the following. 
Nothing. Preparation, it's so much. Drafting the report, it's so much. Attending court, it's so much. You don't have that type of thing. And in fact, in our response to them, when, they asked, when we asked them for the cost, yeah. we broke it down for them. For them. In consultation. Yes. You know, perusal, drafting yes. reports, appearing in court, yes. um, even disbursements like traveling, things like That's that. It, yeah. And we actually set out in the email exactly how we want the costing. Mm. Um, and yeah, it hasn't been forthcoming. Okay, fine. Thanks. So, Mr. You Mayor. know, yesterday when Arata said he is summoning the head of legal aid to come to court, he wants to talk to them, and they responded, we want to talk in chambers. And Rada said, no, it is against the law. We're talking here, right here in the public forum. Because what? This is a matter of public interest and the interest of justice, because this is not making sense. We might have all been under the impression that, yeah, legal aid is dragging their feet again. Remember, our history with legal aid comes with not paying Gomezulu, but I digress. Only to find out that the defense, that the defense only applied for legal aid assistance to pay for the ballistic expert only on the 5th of April, which is literally two weeks ago. Today, we are the 17th. Today, we are the 16th of April. Oh my goodness, what a shock. Something is going on in the defense. They're just not moving in unison. They're not moving as a team. And apparently, Nisi is leading this because his client is the one that had the gun that allegedly killed uh, Senzo Meiwa, but it's as if they need guidance in how to take care of this as a defense team themselves. Eight months is what is surprising here. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on this new discovery. But let's continue listening on to hear how Ujaj Rata is going to handle this. Basically what legal aid board said hmm. was that the counsel who's representing the client that the state is alleging that if I am yeah, quite. was found in this position should be the one that yes, is yes, in yes. the center stage. Yes. So in this instance it's going to be me. So what's going to happen now? Well, it's, it's true that the legal aid board has not yet been finished with the information mm. that they would need for the purposes of costing. Yeah. However, I don't do that myself. I'm also relying on the expert. I've been in communication with the expert, but I've got reason to believe that he could be engaged somewhere else. And in cell phone, I hear they say President Biden phones Cyril Ramaphosa. Excuse me, my lord. I hear that President Biden yes. can phone Cyril Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa in South Africa. The, yes. When he's at Palapala. That is what we have done, my And lord. now you can communicate with the... Uh, the expect. Where is he? In Australia? Where? No, he's here in South Africa. In yeah, South Africa? Yeah, in Pretoria. Oh, uh, no, that's worse. Yeah. But my lord, it is, not, it, it is not really entirely accurate that I can't communicate with him what because is? that is what we've actually been doing. Unfortunately, we don't know what is it that is, is, is delaying him because the delay as of now, it is on his part. But we have just confirmed yesterday that we need that information as soon as possible. And in fact, I had requested in the email that I've dropped him that he should liaise directly with the Legal Aid Board South Africa. He should directly send that information to Legal Aid Board South Africa. But now Legal Aid Board says, no, they don't work like that. No. He must do things through me. That's information that I did not have. And then I requested him yesterday after I received that information from Legal Aid Board South Africa that he needs to direct that quotation to me. And then I forward it to Legal Aid Board South Africa. He's busy working on it now or not. It is not as if we have not done anything. Yeah. Yes. So what's going to happen? Because, uh, um, Mr. let me tell you my, my, my worry. Yes, my lord. You know, actually, forensic evidence is very sensitive. Yes. Okay? You can't expect a witness to wait eight months to be, to be cross-examined. When he comes there, I can't remember. I don't know if I did it. Because it's so long. I also, me, I think I've got a good mind. I don't remember the evidence. We really appreciate that, man. I, I, so, I really appreciate just that. Just listen to me. I'm yes. also going to make an order that everybody here yes. should go over the evidence which was uh, adduced against, I mean, on behalf of the state, which was tendered by Mr. Mangani. Uh, Colonel Mangani, yeah. yes. And mm -hmm. even you, you must refresh yourselves about the evidence which he tendered so to be able to cross examine. We've got records to that effect. Yes. yes. I know. Yesterday, Mr. Ramasipiri couldn't remember whether there was a letter written by the Station commander. It was a It was a who? I was corrected. It was, it was who? Else. It was who? Somebody else? Yes. Okay, we shall not mention the name. You see, that's what worries, worries me. Yeah, that is true. Man. So what yes. must we do? What is the way forward now? How many months do you need? Uh, we definitely don't need months, my lord, because uh -huh. we already have a preliminary report. However, there, there's a suggestion um, that we have as, as defense that uh, 
in the interest of time, and probably that will carry a lot of time, that the two experts, that is now after Mr. Mr. Titler, our expert is Mr. Titler, after he would have completed the, 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 his report, then he will consult with Mr. Mangana with the permission of the state, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Mangani, just to try and curtail issues by way of, uh, what do they call it now? Uh, 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 by through joint minutes. Mm -hmm. Agree on certain things, and then we come to court and deal with those issues that they do not agree on. In, in our view, we thought that would go a very long way to yeah. curtail the processes. But in any event, my lord, mm. in as much as the court has indicated that uh, we, 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 uh, with time, memory lapse does happen, yeah, most of the time, uh, forensic evidence is contained in papers, and they've got computers and everything. They can simply go back to the report that he has, and then he can refresh his memory. Uh, uh, and I'm not trying to justify the of evidence name, getting yes. lost. Excuse me, I've heard of evidence getting lost. Have you ever heard of it? Then, then it means we're in a terrible state with yeah, our ballistic uh, uh, laboratory. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If evidence can just be lost, we need it. But that is the position. Man. We <laughs> hope and believe. Because now, Legal Aid has also undertaken that as soon as they get that information, that's what Mr. Michuto told me yesterday, that it might not take two days to go through the application with an approval and or with, uh, without an approval. But the maximum will be two days and then we'll get the result. And once we get the result, he will then say to us, proceed with Mr. Titerk. It's not like Mr. Titerk is going to wait up until such time that he gets paid. Once we get a go ahead, we request him to consult with Mr. Mangena on the issues that he feels is necessary for him to consult with Mr. Mangena on, and then we take it from there. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to determine as of now the period at which we can expect him to be at court with the report already in his hand. So how long should we postpone for again for the evidence of Mangani to be cross-examined? How long? I don't know. May, may, know. May, uh, probably, my lord, I think it will be a prudent thing if we meet. Yeah, how uh, long? If, uh, one if, time frame. If, if um, um, from where I'm standing, um, say almost a week or two. I'll give you a month. How's that? That will be fine, my lord, but that is going to happen even before that. Yeah, we'll see. As it is the court, ma'am. Is it okay a month? I know you, you're not supposed to lease with them. Is that, uh, that is a procedure. Yeah. No, um, my lord, it's, it depends on how much the, the, the quote comes, whether it's done in my office or provincial office. If it has to go to CCMC, it is a bit longer, uh, the constitutional case, but I will, um, we have discussed it already because this, this issue was raised by national, at, we discussed it at our national office. Um, I will send the request if it has to go up to national office via round robin, but that'll take a couple, you know, more than two days to finalize. And then obviously, I'm not too sure how long the expert will take to finalize his report and be ready. That obviously, it has to do uh, with. I thought he had started on the report, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Minister, has he started on the report? Uh, yes, my lord, as I've said, we've got a preliminary report. It's not like it's going to start afresh. Mr. Baloui, what's the state's view? As the court pleases, uh, I think in light of uh, what Ms. Isola has said, um, we will um, abide by those arrangements that the um, issue regarding the uh, cross-examination of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mangena, and it's Mangena, not Ma Mangena. Mangena, yeah, sorry Mangena, about that. Yeah. Uh, some call him Mangena, but it's actually Mangena. Mangena, okay, yes, sorry. Mangena that uh, the matter stand down for a month, as the court has suggested. Yeah, is that okay? Yes, that's it. But it doesn't stand down for a month. <coughs> when that month elapses, the cross-examination of yes. Mr. Mangenya commences. Yes. You don't postpone it for a month, and then you come and tell me, yes, you know, my house was broken into, I had the disc under my desk or table. It means if we postpone it for a month, it is for the cross-examination of Mangenya. Yes. So give me a date, all of you. <sighs> well, today is the 16th of uh, April. Yeah. So we're then looking at a date after the 16th of May. Which is? I agree with your colleagues here. Yes. The 20th, that is the next Monday. It was yes. the 16th yes. of May is on a Thursday. 20th. Yes, the 20th. That of, is on a Monday. Of May. Uh, yes. yes. I'm not so sure if that is. Uh, yes. It's fine with my colleagues. Yes. Mr. Gomezuru, is it okay? No. It is suitable. Mamalo, don't have a case in Peter Marisbeck. <laughs> it's suitable, thank you. Ms. Micholono? Okay, then it's, a, it's agreed then that the matter regarding the cross examination of Mr. Mangena will be postponed to the 20th of May for such an exigence. Is that okay? Thanks ever so much for your assistance. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Please be excused. Thanks, your excuse. Thank you.
Okay. So, all things equal, hopefully on the 20th of May, of the, we'll finally hear the cross-examination of the ballistic expert, Umangenia, for the state. And then the defense will call their ballistic expert, assuming legal aid has agreed, or should I say approved, to pay their expert. But here's the question I draw to you. Please comment down below. What happens if legal aid denies to pay? What happens next? Because we already know they've exhausted the family resources. I, it's not enough. Legal aid says no. Then what? Trial continues with no um, rebuttal from an independent ballistic expert. I mean, this is such, such... It's, it's, money makes the world go round. And that's what we're learning today. So thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like this video, comment down below, and catch you absolutely on our next upload.